repeat, rematch, in-season tournament. It's going to be everything for the 76ers tonight against the Indiana Pacers. Mitch and I will talk about that and more next on Locked on 76ers. You are Locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. So I'm Keith Pompey, part of the, the crew with my man. You're looking at him, rocking his Howard shirt, Howard sweatshirt. There you go. Hoodie, hoodie. hoodie. I'm, let me get it right. Got a Howard hoodie on, <laughs> HPCU and Al. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, he's like, yes, sir. <laughs> right? That's but that's I got to wear my high school stuff. I ain't know, we, you know, this and that. The, but the, it the, is what it is. I, I see you, the North Catholic. That's a, that's, that's <laughs> a classic. Right? Right? Uh, nah, classic. I just couldn't find my picture. <laughs> it's like, nah, <laughs> I'm just messing. But no, nah, I'm Keith Pompey, and this is my man, John Mitchell. You know, we're here to give y'all some basketball insights. You know, you know, you guys, like we said, you could come here every day uh, if we're free and available, and you could get us on the YouTube channel, which you guys are doing right now. But we want to talk about tonight's game. Tonight's game is the first of a grueling back-to-back, and I get it, y'all. The Sixers have already defeated these two teams. We're talking about the Indiana Pacers tonight, and then they play the Boston Celtics tomorrow. Yes, they defeated both of those teams. However, it's tough to beat teams twice in a row, what the Sixers are going to try to do tonight. It's also that this game is all about adjustments. We know that. They're going to make some changes. And it's an in-season tournament. We may touch a little bit on the Boston Celtics, but – we're going to really deep dive into them tomorrow, but we'll talk touch a little bit about them uh, perhaps today. But Mitch, you're you've been covering the NBA long, way longer than I have, right? And you know this is a little different vibe. But when you play a team so close together, yeah, you're back to back, right? And you know about adjustments, and then on top of that, you put in this in season tournament tournament atmosphere which the players surprisingly are really into how tough is this matchup for the Sixers yeah, you know it's it's, uh, it's it's going to be a tough matchup and you know I mean and and he comes back you know Rick Carlisle can be you know you've been around him long enough to know he can be somewhat testy uh, <laughs> you know not, not exactly he's like the Bill Belichick of of NBA coaches man you know very terse but he's going to have that team ready. Um, you know, you know, they've been hearing a whole lot about, you know, Tyrese Maxey putting up 50 on them. You know, I, and I'm sure, you know, Tyrese Halliburton, a guy who at one point I thought might have been a 76er. So I, I think, um, yeah, it, it, this when, when you get a chance to see a team this close, it really, the coaches have a huge impact on the game because they've got a chance. It's, it's like, it's almost like the NFL where, you know, you see a team, and then you see them again much closer, sometimes much closer than you do in the NBA because you see it dispersed throughout an 82-game season. Um, so I, I, I expect this game. And, and the last game was actually close. It was, it was, a, close, it was a good game. Um, but I, I don't think you'll see, you know, that they're, they're, they're going to, you know, may, maybe run a double. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll run Tyree off of that pick and roll. Maybe they'll, you know, a hard double on one of those guys. It's going to be interesting. I, th- I think it's going to be a fun game to watch because, like you said, it's, it's adjustment time, and we'll see who makes the better adjustments. Uh, and, you know, and, and it, it'll be a test for Nick Nurse. You know, it'll, it'll be a chance to see what he can really do. Um, 
in a game against, you know, an upper echelon NBA coach and a team that's, the you know, offensively, they're, they're the best team in the league still. They're averaging, I think, 126 points per game. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's a nice – the Sixers are entering – they they finished playing some of the some of the B some of the the, the B division teams on this stretch, uh, and then this payback. Hey, the big payback. You might want to have James Brown in the background for you know for people mm-hmm. watching the, for people watching the podcast who remember James Brown. You know, so yes, it's a it's gonna be a good game. Yeah, it's, it's, it should be an exciting game. And and the thing about it is like. You know, a lot of people like, look, man, what are y'all talking about? Maxi was balling. My, yes. my man had 50 points and B was beasting him, and which is true. Like, mm-hmm. you know, think about it. If Maxi received a lot of the headlines for scoring a career high 50 points, along with, you know, seven rebounds, five assists. He also had three blocks, right? Yeah. So that was great. Yeah. You know, MB added 37 points, a, a game high, 13 rebounds, seven assists, you know, the whole nine. And a lot of their success was because they relied heavily in the pick and roll to start the game, right? Mm-hmm. That resulted in the, the two combining to score the team's 13, thir- first 13 points. Let me get it out right. Mm-hmm. And then they actually scored 22 of the Sixers' first 26 points on 8 for 11 shooting. Mm-hmm. But after the game, the Pacers will tell you, they say, hey, look, they played well. But they believe their 30 to 10 advantage in second chance points were the difference. Mm-hmm. They believe that that enabled Maxi and Embiid to get extra touches. When we look at Embiid's 13 rebounds, mm-hmm. eight of them came on the offensive end. So when they talk uh, about effort, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Eight on the offensive end. So what, what Indiana is going to talk to you about is effort right, on the defensive end. And they're also going to talk about the adjustments that's going to be made. Mm-hmm. And that's one of them, like, stopping them. Right. Them. So, to me, I honestly think that I wouldn't be surprised if Tobias Harris got off and had a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if, if they, Nick, they Nick Batum got some open threes and hit them. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I think that it's going to be set up for those guys. But at the same time, Mitch, this is why they got Nick Nurse, right? right? They said he's a great coach when it comes down to in-game adjustments, mm-hmm. and he's a great coach when in uh, adjustments in between games. Right. So to me, this is what I want to see. I want to see, like, the adjustments that are going to be made, and I want to see how Tobias and, and uh, the other guys step up their games tonight yeah and um you know it's interesting we say step up his game but Tobias has been he's been steady Eddie you know he's been yeah. very steady very efficient shot the ball well um and he seems to know when he knows a lot better when and where to pick his to pick his place um in in, in the offense um you know they um the sixes are it, it will be interesting to see I mean they, they club they drub them on the glass and it's going to be interesting to see if 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 they can make that adjustment because the Sixers are one you know unlike last year they're they're a better rebounding team, so uh, it, it is. I mean, from the standpoint of when you get a strategic game in the season, you can actually say it's it's actually a gift to fans. I think that you get a game, you know, between between two coaches, you know, two two championships. Let's be honest, two championship winning coaches. Um, and there are adjustments to be made because it's an important early season game. I mean, I mean granted, the Sixers are on an eight-game win streak, um, but the odds do say that's going to end soon. You know, that's just that's just just where the odds fall. Uh, does it end tonight against Indy? I, I think the Sixers come out fired up again. You know, I think they come out fired up. I think they come. The one thing the Sixers have been that, that you haven't seen complacency. The Sixers are are constantly attacking the defense um i mean with maxi and with an emphasis on that but also when you talk about adjustments we, we're now going to start seeing how they move into the you know the roco uh the batoons you know um the marshes we're, we're, we're going to start seeing those guys become more of a role because you know i mean you know kelly Ubre prayers up for kelly Ubre and his family um 
you know, you're not going to see him. We're not going to see him for a minute. So, uh, yeah, it, it really plays into a it, it's an interesting in season game. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It really does. It does. But look, y'all, how does Thanksgiving sound? This year, our body is here to give you cash back and help make your Thanksgiving table is complete. Because who wants turkey without gravy? Uh, some days I do, but nah, I just joking. I don't, I don't want the gravy. I didn't give me the gravy. So starting November 1st, for the first year in a row, Ibotta is giving 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast, right? So download the Ibotta app now and use the code LOCK to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting November 1st. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D. Do it today, people. Definitely today. Do it today. (laughs) Not tomorrow, today. (laughs) Or you're gonna be out playing me stuff. Um, so yeah, like you know what, Mitch, that's the thing. I, I do think I'm with you. I do think that this is a tough test, but I think the Sixers are the better team. I do. I, um, you know, and 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 yes, the chances are that they gotta lose one pretty soon. Mm-hmm. But I, I just feel like they're a deep team. Um now the one thing is we do know, like you said, Indiana has the number one offense in the league. Indiana got a bunch of young bulls who likes to get out there and run. And the Sixers have a lot of old heads who, you know, want, you know, stuff like that. But, 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 I, but I feel like that the Sixers are the better team. I feel like they have more options. If this was last year, I would say, I think they would lose. And the reason being is because it was always just all about Joel and B. Right. Yeah. You yeah. always had to do it in a little sprinkle of maxi. But now I feel like, you know, they have options. And with that free flow and offense, it's easy for other guys to get a handle on the game and, and make an imprint on, yeah. on it. But uh, I do feel like that they'll end up getting it. It's going, to, but, I, but I think it's going to be another close one. I do. Like a lot of people think because they won by 11 points that it, was, it wasn't close. It was close. Right. It was close. Right. It was it was close, so that, uh, that that's my thing. I do think that, like I said, Tobias could have a good game. Um, you know, a couple other guys could have a good game. Um, and and the thing is, we talk about Cub, we talk about other people, um, we, we talk about even Daniel House. There are guys with their imprints on the game doesn't always have to come through scoring, right? Through the defensive end and yeah. things that yeah. don't show up on the stats. But I do think that. You know, Maxi is elite. I don't think he's going to get 50 points again. I mean, and, and that's just because I'm not – that's not a knock. That's just no. like what's the chances of a guy dropping 50 on back-to-back games, right? Um, but but I think that Joel will have close to his his average, which is 30-something. I, I think, think I think Joel will go above his average. You think? You think he'll go over 30? Go okay. Over 30. Okay. So, hey, well, then it's, it's going to be Joel and B night. But I do think that Maxi is going to score – you know, twenties in his twenties, and I, I think they will win. Now, the the, the thing is, um, you know, Tyrese Halliburton. You know, he's a scary guy to me, man. Like last game, he had seventeen assists, and nobody was talking about it. I was thinking the same thing, man. Twenty five <laughs> points, yeah. Assists, and you an afterthought. <laughs> yeah, he was a, like, yo, it was like. Yeah, it was like you look at it on the box. Like I, pick, I literally picked up the box score and was like. It's like, oh, by the way, yeah, yeah. all right. He, he, he dropped this fifty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he, oh, he, he dropped a tiny Archie ball, a quietly a tiny Archie ball on him. <laughs> I know, right? It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. But so you know, I mean, they and 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 we'll we'll see. Like you said, they're going to be gritty, and, and it's going to be a lot. So we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll get a good yeah. we'll get a good idea. We'll get a good idea. Who, yeah. who do you think? Who do you think? Who are you expecting to? I mean, I know you say Joel, but anybody else that you expect is going um, Yeah, I think uh, – I wouldn't be surprised if Batum, you know, got into his bag of tricks. And, and, and also, like you said, I think Tobias, man. I think Tobias is really smart 
Well, one thing I think, you know, Tobias doesn't need to think as much. Um, I, I think that he was overthinking the game because, because, because they had that pick and roll last year with Joel and Harden. And, and that was the, pretty much their offense. You saw a pick and roll out of them more than you saw out of any team in the league, probably. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was like, do I stand over here in the corner? You know, the Philly fans are mad at me because I'm almost making 40 million to get 40 million a year and I'm not giving them 25. <laughs> you know, so I, I think I, I think mentally he's unchanged now and knows that he can go and play more freely. So I wouldn't be surprised if he had a good game. I mean, he's he's been very aggressive now. Yeah, extremely. Yeah, yeah, extremely. I mean, he playing bully ball too. Like he's like bully ball out of Tobias. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, like you know, like go ahead, T. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's strong island, right? He, he's strong yeah, island. He's strong, yeah, he's strong. Yeah, he like he got he he on the straight New York state of mind. Yeah, he's he's, he's hearing the music <laughs> of the enemy and rock Kim in his head yeah. now. He's no they need to play Jay-Z on he when he scored now. New yeah. York State of Mind. <laughs> like, yo. Like move out the way. Hey, yeah, hey, good for <laughs> Tobias, man. Because I, and I know you. I, I, I think that you like him, and I, I think he's a good guy anyway. I think he's, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's a good community person. He's a good human being. Um, and, and of course, you know, you unlike a lot because you cover the league and actually talk to people. You know, that there are a lot of good people in it, but he's definitely one of them. So I root for him. Yeah, for the hate that this guy has received, and I, you know, this is a little sidebar, but like for the hate that he receives uh-huh. and. If people knew a lot of the stuff yeah, he yeah. does for like underprivileged people yeah. without like looking for recognition, yeah, they would be blown away. And the funny part about it is, it's not just like you know, there's just certain dudes who say, okay, like okay, like Tobias, for instance, Tobias played in, in Milwaukee. You know, he he was just a, a rookie, so he really didn't, you know, wasn't embedded in the city. But right. Tobias played for the Orlando Magic. From there, he went to the Detroit Pistons, right? Mm-hmm. From there, he goes to L.A., and now he's in Philly. Do you know that every place that he's been to, he started like a little, he got a foundation and he does stuff. Mm-hmm. And to this day, he still holds those foundations and still does stuff for the people in those communities. And like, and what he, one time I asked him about it, and I was like, yo, T, like, you still doing it there? He says, well, it wasn't the kids' fault that I got traded. Like, I can't. Right. right. Because I got traded. What do I do? I stop giving and stop right. helping them out. Right. So, like, and, the, you know, he, he, like, he tries not to talk about it, but he still does stuff. So, to me, it's one of those things where I got the utmost respect for him, mm-hmm. for the community, because he does a lot that people don't know. Yeah. He does yeah. a lot. I'm talking about. And and uh, I'm gonna be honest, and, it, and it's not like one of those things where, you know, Tobias is one of them kids who was eating surp sandwiches growing up. Like, right. forget his father was an agent. His father, um, you know, had, had a clothing line, the whole nine, like you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. When before, you know, he, dad was paid before Tobias. Yeah. yeah. But they always gave back. And yeah. Tobias is one of those dudes. So I got, yeah, I got the utmost respect for my man. You know, I do. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you putting that out there, Keith. Because you like again, you know, you, you know, you, too often you hear athletes being stereotyped, and I know what he does. Mostly, you know, just by conversations with you, I know what Tobias does. And I've seen him on the street a few times, and you know, he's looks you straight in the eye. He's conversational. But he cares about where he came from, man. And he cares about people who are left behind, struggling in the city. Like, you know, we're the biggest poorest big city in America. Now let me get off of that my soapbox, but yeah, he's a good dude that I root for constantly. Yeah, he is. He is, man. Like it's he is. He's a good dude. Good dude. But let me talk to y'all about FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers could get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
Now, Mitch, first time, last time we talked about this in season tournament. Now we know this court is going to be ugly, right? <laughs> Sorry, Sixers fans, but that red and black scheme, from what I saw, mm. is horrible. But I digress. <laughs> Let me stop. But listen, here's the deal. When we talked about this thing, it was like, you know what, man, it's money grab. This is this, this mm-hmm. is that. But now you're starting to see that the players are getting into it. It's still yeah. it is what it is. Like, I mean, nothing changed, but the players are getting into it. Sixers played them tonight. The last time the Sixers played, people were uh Jared Jack, uh, assistant coach for the Detroit Pistons, and other people, they took exception to Joel and B shooting a three at the end of the game. However, it's all about how many points you score. Right. You got to do that. So in that instance, they really didn't know the rules, this and that. And and typically if Joel does that, yeah, that's not a good look. Right. You know, this is different. Yeah. So I'm here. It's like college football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Aggressively. Yeah, and and it's it's funny. You know what? You know what's worse than college football? Is high school football now when you got these nationally ranked teams. So, like, like what they want to do is they in order for them to keep their national ranking when they play like a so-so team they know they got to drill them like you yep. can't score you can't score like no less than 70 points against you know little sisters of the poor you know what i mean you got to break you know what i mean you got to you got to go was, out there and crush them if was, not you going to slide out the ranking there, huh? was a, there was a school in virginia i think over the weekend scored 100 beat a team 104 to 0 in the uh in, yeah. a, in, a, in a district playoffs. So. <laughs> exactly. And look, a couple of weeks ago, there was a school in, I want to say, Alabama that scored 40-something points in the first quarter. Mm. How did you score 40-something points in the first quarter? Like, like I even asked somebody, is that even possible? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, it's like, you give me the ball. Like, the quarterback hands it off. You take it from Ripper from him and run the other way. Like, you know what I mean? Then, next thing you know, you throw on a bomb the next play. Right, like, right. Yo, that's crazy. Crazy. So, yeah, but so with that being said, it's going to be, it should be some excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, guys are going to get into it. Um, who knows? Maybe Joel may have to fire up a three at the end of the game again this one if they win. But, uh, but I'm, I mean, uh, have you, have, have you changed your opinion slightly on this tournament? You know what? It's it's interesting when when they first came up with the idea and, and then they implemented it. I, like like you know we talked about we thought it was a money grab, um, but other leagues have done it. You know, um, you know it, it's really prevalent in in, in soccer, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so I'm not. I, I think again, this is a perfect game for it because you're playing. You know, you're playing the Indiana team that's also you know one and zero in a tournament, and. Um, it, it's uh, it, it it has for a little interest, and, and let's be quite honest, you know the, it's the the money is good for the players. I mean, you know, you, these guys make a make a lot of money, and people say, well, they don't need any more money. But with the, the winning team gets was it five hundred per, yeah, per play. You know, everybody, the coach, yeah. everybody, yeah. So the, the the equipment people, and everybody else. I don't know how many other. I don't know who, where, where you where the cutoff where, where is. Cut off I do is. know. I do know the coaches and the players get paid. Yeah. yeah. So it's um. Yeah. It's it's that the, the, those those assistant coaches will be working harder than they've worked at any point during the season. Best believe yeah. that. And it, and and it is a little because it's drawn out, you know. Um, and the better teams appear to be winning, so. You know, there's there's a there's a carrot involved. There's a there's a dangling carrot involved in it. So it's it's. I think I'm more interested, and in even the courts. You know, as, as ugly as some of the courts have been, some of them haven't looked too bad. You know, it's it's a, it, it's so it's not that it's not as hard on the eyes as I thought it would be. All right, let me ask you this: How did the one in Detroit look on TV? Because I, I like it looked pretty. I mean, it was hard to like you know. It's like it might have been hard to play on, but because uh, a little distracting. But 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 it didn't look bad on TV. I mean, it didn't look bad in person. But how did it look on television? It didn't look bad, you know. What? And, and, and I, I I tell you what it does add is it, some of the in, the international leagues where they mm-hmm. have courts that have designs on them. 
Mm-hmm. If, I, I think at the internet, it's, the, the NBA is always marketing. And I think the international fan base will see those courts and say, hey, that looks more, more like something we have in Belgium or something like that. And the NBA is always doing that internationally, always marketing to the international uh, market. Um, but it's, it's it's not rough on the eyes like I thought it was. You know, you, you eye just a little bit, say, OK, this is different, but it's it's not doesn't require a, a lot of adjusting. So it's, I'm, I'm OK with it, man. I'm, I've come over to the good side because it, there is a again, there is a prize at the end of the, at, uh, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And um, I think it, it it does heighten the, the competition. Yeah, it does. It does. It's heightened Margin, like, marginally, but it does heighten it. Yeah, it does, and it gives you something more to. Um, I don't know, because let's think about it, man. Like you, like again, you've been covering the NBA way longer than I have, and um, it is what it is. Like you know, they want to make more money. They want to bring some excitement. But you've been covering the NBA longer than I have, and. I remember people were telling me, don't worry about it. No one cares until January. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like people would say that, like no one cares about the NBA season mm-hmm. until January. Mm-hmm. And now they just bring in some excitement. Like, but like if the Sixers win, if they win today, then, you know, you got to start really thinking about, well, you know, they, uh, let's see what they're going to do um, for like making plans for probably going to the quarterfinals. Because yeah. you know, like if they win, they win the day, and then they play Atlanta on Friday. That's a that's an in season tournament game. Mm-hmm. So you know, what I mean, yeah, they now it's going to be tough because then they got the Celtics in between um, the next game, um, which is tomorrow. But but at the same time, you know, you got some high stakes, so to speak. So yeah, it should it, be fun, man. Should be fun. And, and, and here's another thing I was just thinking. I, I turned on the uh, NBA Inside. In, inside a show on ESPN, and there was there was uh, Therese Maxey talking to uh, Maliga Andrews, um, and he must have been on there for about ten minutes yesterday. Uh, and, and you know, in the seventy sixes are talking about you know potentially bringing in a, 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 an arena, a downtown arena, to Market Street. Yeah, um, they're a hot subject. They're a hot topic right now. You know, they're they're they're, they're on an eight game winning streak. They've got this right. Ascending 22, was he 23 now? You have his birthday, yeah. 23 now, yeah. 23, he's a 23 year old player. Uh, and and they're, they're talking about building a 1.6 million dollar billion. Hmm. There's a big difference between M and B's billion dollar arena downtown. So there's there's a lot of interest around this franchise. And um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, those, those pictures, those drawings look pretty good of uh, the potential new arena. Yeah, we'll see if that ever happens, though, because, you know, the debate goes on and on and on and on and on. And on. So we'll see. We'll see. Some people going to be happy. Some people going to be pissed off. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see. It's, yeah. you know, it is what it is. I don't I don't have a dog in this race because I'm not going to benefit from it. You know what I mean? I know that's right. You know what I mean? Like, I just, people, I'm not getting paid, but it is what it is. But you know yeah. what? Wherever they, wherever they are. Um, I probably won't be on the beat at that time, but but wherever they are, I'll I'll definitely go see, go to a couple games and check mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But look, y'all, thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow's show will be on none other than the game against the Boston Celtics. Now we will dissect some things that happen that's gonna happen tonight. But we're also going to do a deep dive into what facing the Boston Celtics is. I told you, we we we, we teased y'all a little bit today. Sorry, we were talking about we were going to talk more about it, but we got a lot of other things. We had a lot of things to talk about. But tomorrow, we're going to definitely do a deep dive. And I want to let I want to thank y'all for listening. And I want to remind y'all that y'all can uh, get this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. It's free and available. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, right? Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And whenever you go to the YouTube channel, make sure you click on that Liberty Bell. And what that does is make you a new subscriber and you get notifications on when the next podcast goes. So for my man rocking his Howard hoodie, 
I got to see you rock some Overbrook stuff next time. One I had time. that on yesterday. Oh, yo, oh, you had your book on. Yeah, I had my book on yesterday. Oh, oh, that was a hoodie. You okay? Yeah. All right. I, you know, I, I thought it was like Holmesburg fo youth football or some of that. But nah, whenever, whenever, yeah, whenever y'all, um, you know, just make sure y'all come back here. We're gonna keep it real. We'll keep it straight. And I, um, and we hope that y'all have a blessed day and a blessed week. Peace. Go Sixers.